preparing to stream. Okay, it looks like we're streaming now. Are we? What's the buzz this week, Denise? Oh, I'm buzzing about the cicadas this week. Are these cicadas or cicadas? Yeah, we, you did. We talked the cicadas. We talked about them last week. Brood ten. Did they come out yet? I would. I've been checking up on them, and they're late because in addition to being cold here in Italy, it's also cold in the states. So it's taken them a while. Yeah, there are just a few, a few, few coming up. out, the brave ones, and then the other ones are yes. in underground where it's still warm. But, huh? but I was reading that if you're either in that first group or the last group, you really got kind of ripped off in life Yeah, because the first ones come out and there aren't many around and the predators will get them and they, there aren't many other ones they can mate with. So it's really a terrible existence. Mm. And the same with the last ones who come out because everybody else is already dead. Okay, so you just right? want to be in the middle of the might live somewhere. a while because the birds have overdosed on um, cicadas, but. So you want to be like a C student. Yeah, you, you got to come out like when everybody of... else comes out. That's you want to be way like average, is. average Joe. You want to be an average yes. cicada, otherwise you're going to lose out. You're going to lose out. And your life is short, especially yeah. if you're a cicada. It's not that short though, 17 years. Pretty long. Well, you're underground in the cicadas, dark. What, you're either 13 years or 17. Yeah, but you're underground in the dark and you're not having any fun. You're just like sucking on roots of trees, That's waiting. For 17 years? Yeah. Boring. I wouldn't want to be Pretty a cicada. Boring. Pretty boring. Mm. Yeah. You know, so that was not what's boring. What's you? Well, I was, you know, scrambling to find something to eat, which is like most of my existence. I'm a little bit like a cicada in that, but um, because I just got back. <laughs> Got to go back in the classroom at three. So I'm like, oh, okay. <clears throat> looking for some meat. So I did that. Oh. But then I accompanied myself. I played the uh, the Great Gatsby era playlist on Spotify that we found oh. for our lesson for this week. And that kind of was like, the first song is like Cab Calloway. Okay. So it kind of, you know, put me in this, the Roaring Twenties mood. So I didn't get a chance to listen to your playlist yet, yet but I got home, ran home. I ate some leftovers. I had my coffee. Well done. So I'm all ready to go. Yeah, great Gatsby. I saw that that's the theme of your lesson this week, the yeah, Roaring Twenty. Yeah, you. Well, you know, you brought it up again because you were reading it in your book club, which made me want to read it again because it's one of my favorite books ever. And then I found a free PDF of it. And then I found another story I really like, uh, which also has a video somewhere, but I didn't put it in the lesson, which is uh, Bernice Bob's Her Hair. Okay. Did you read that? I did read also that, but I just Scott read Fitzgerald. another one, um, something about uh, as big as diamonds. Uh, it's about this kid who is not very wealthy, who's not wealthy at all, and starts hanging out with these super rich kids who the one kid said that his uh, father has a diamond as big as the Empire State Building or something. So he, he starts mm -hmm. getting as a child into that wealthy atmosphere. And I think actually they lived in um, Montana, these super wealthy people, really? because it seems strange. I know a lot of things about Montana, but in Montana, especially in Butte, Montana, which was the copper capital of the world, there that was go. the first city to have electric lighting. Do you know why? Right. Why? Because you need copper to make electric wires. Oh, there you go. So they had electricity and there were these copper kings that nobody ever heard about, which actually they should make a mini series about these guys. They were the oil, the oil barons of the day were these copper kings. So yeah, tons of money. And then they ended up living in Montana. They didn't, they weren't from there, but they had to keep an eye on the business and they married beautiful women and the women didn't want to stay out there. There were no schools for their kids that were to their liking. So they ended up basically living a life of luxury in Montana by themselves. Oh, interesting. Well, I've got another copper fact for you since we're on copper, which is why we call police officers cops because it comes from copper because their badges were made out of copper. Oh. 
But since we're talking about history, we're talking about um, about that time, 19th century stuff, right? Uh, today, I was looking up the history of Phi Beta Kappa, right? You know, Phi oh. Beta Kappa is the, um, the honor system. Mm -hmm. And so I was just sort of thinking, I wonder what the deal is with that. Like, how did that start? So started around the same time, William and Mary College, and it was meant to be, it started out as like a, a fraternity kind of thing. Mm. Then it became an academic only thing, but um, it started out that they wanted to have something that was purely American and had nothing to do with Germany or England. So they wanted to have oh. something that's the oldest honor society in America. And uh, now, of course, it's, it's, if you, you know, if you're inducted into Phi Beta Kappa, you're, you're chosen by your university because you have a high enough grade point average and you, you have studied languages and science. Um, are you a Phi but, Beta Kappa? Well, as a matter of fact, I am. You but are. Lots of famous, you know who else is a new, newly inducted uh, Phi Beta Kappa is Amanda Gorman. Really? Yeah. Well, I had no, Harvard, though. Okay, Amanda Gorman, but I had no idea that you were a Phi Beta Kappa. Yeah, isn't that interesting? So when it happened, the story is great because I, you know, this is at college that you usually get inducted your, your third year, your fourth year, right? I think I was in my last year. I wasn't smart enough to be my third year, but when they, I didn't identify as a particularly good student, even though I worked pretty hard because I paid for my college myself. So my thing was I need to finish because it was expensive. <laughs> and so so I worked really hard and I, I, there's one class that I had to take two times when I was in the first year, it was like a, a math class. I didn't apply myself very much. So. But you didn't get a grade on it. Did on you the, like drop out? No, it was like, it was, no, grade. I just, I took, I got a grade and it was a bad grade. So I had to retake it. Okay. It's the only class in my life that I got a D in. I mean, I was, I'm still embarrassed about it. But anyway, I, I retook it. So since I did so badly on that one class, my first year of of uh, university, I always identified as kind of being a bad student, not being a good student. So I felt like I had to work harder than everybody else. Well, when I was in my, my last year of school, um, I got a letter in the mail saying that we'd like to invite you to join Phi Beta Kappa. Oh. But I didn't understand why, because, <laughs> so I called up the office, I'm not kidding. And I said, you know, I've gotten this letter by mistake. <laughs> I said, I, you know, there's no reason I should be, you know, invited into Phi Beta Kappa. And the woman said, um, Phi Beta Kappa does not make that kind of mistake. <laughs> <laughs> We're too like, smart to make okay. that kind of mistake. <laughs> yeah, so, so it was true. And uh, so, you know, so I did get inducted. And then, you know, I kind of forgot about it for a little while. But I don't know what made me think of it today. Oh, I was thinking about it because I'm teaching. A, here's where the connection comes. Because I'm teaching a course for adults who are... Um, for doing a professional class on uh, for working in a hotel, right? So mm -hmm. I was thinking about hotel stuff and I was thinking about that very elite um, association you can be part of your, uh, uh, what do you call those people? Tell me the person who tells you where to go for lunch, what are they called? Oh, the, the concierge. concierge. Well, there's like a really elite concierge club called the Golden Key concierge and you know they're like if you're part it's like this worldwide network and you can get everything you need because it's just these are the people with all the connections all right so, they can get you the tickets to the broadway show that sold exactly, out exactly exactly the, all that the stuff. reservation in the fancy restaurant that you have right. to reserve three years in advance exactly the person i aspire to be in every way but have zero <laughs> you know there's no way i could ever do that but but it made me think golden key then i thought of Phi beta kappa because their symbol is the golden key and since i didn't it? really feel like doing my work I thought I would do a little research on the history of Phi Beta Kappa. So it's about the same time. So coming all the way back to the copper mine. Do you have a ceremony for this Phi Beta Kappa? Or? Yeah, there's a ceremony. They give you a certificate. Then there's an actual a gold key. You buy it. But my grandma bought it for me. That has your And do you have meetings? Like, do you guys Zoom together? No, or? You get, no this, is, this is the one where you get inducted and you're a member for life and you don't have to do a thing. They send you- You don't have a, to do anything. You don't have to pay anything. No, nothing. you don't have to pay anything. They send you, okay. they send you like once a year, they're, um, they've got yeah. a literary magazine. If you want to get it more than once a year, I think you can subscribe to okay. it. So anyway. Right. Well, I so didn't I know that about, about you. That. Something new every day. Well, well there you the go. What's the difference Denise. between Phi Beta Kappa and Mensa? Like, could you join Mensa? No, you have to take a test for Mensa. And I would never pass that one because that's like the genius test, right? Where you have to have uh, an IQ higher than a certain number. So you have to be like, I think Albert Einstein, who is also Phi Beta Kappa. Um, but I think he's honorary because there are honorary right. 
Phi Beta Kappa he graduate. People. He was a little bit old to be graduating yeah, from like, American University. Yeah, I was looking at some of the names, the honorary ones. They were people with big money, like Rockefeller was one. I'm assuming okay. that maybe they wanted to add to their foundation or something. <laughs> I don't know. But um, yeah, but Mensa, are, you know, that's that's the the Brainiac one where you have to take mm-hmm. the test and, and be, you could pass that one probably. I could. But I, I could no, I don't think so. Could. Well, you know who's Brainiac. Mensa? Sharon Stone is Mensa. Really? Yes. She was on um, TV on um, Fazio, that show that they do on Sundays yesterday. She didn't mention that, but I I just thought of that because I heard, I read that she was uh, Mensa. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. I think, you know, and I think for Mensa, you can, you can take the test and then you pay to have it graded or something like that. So like I've taken those online ones just to see, you know, when you're supposed to be doing something else, you see how smart you are. And of course, you know, absolutely brilliant every time, but I don't think I'd fork out the cash. To have <laughs> what did they say? Try again, Caroline. <laughs> Almost, no, not yet. Try again. Not, you know, above average. <laughs> like a, <laughs> I used to do it with my, you know, they should I, make it a Kahoot. It would be more fun. I know it would be definitely be more fun that you could, you could compete against your friends. Like trivia would be like, that would be fun. But it's always those like, kind of like those puzzles and things that you have to try to figure out logic. Oh, I don't have a lot of logic. logic. Right there. Right. No. Right. And There's math. a lot going on up here, but not a lot of logic. Huh? Is there math in it too? A lot There's of a math. a lot of math in it. Okay. There's a lot of math in it. So, yeah. and I don't know if you can prepare for it. I think you just have to, you're supposed to. I don't do know. It. It's not like the state department exam. No, which you can prepare for. You can class, prepare. Yeah. You got to memorize all those laws. There's a lot of stuff. I passed the first one. I didn't pass the second one. The, pa- the second one is where you actually have to like show up and be there. And then you're, you're, oh, the interview. you're going against your peers. Yeah, but they put you in a sort of group interview where you're, you're going and you're, the, the peers that they put me with were like way smarter than me. But oh. the test itself, is mostly the constitution. Like if you just go into, if you, I did it at the old association in the, in that old part, I just read books from there. Mm-hmm. I didn't even, nothing new when I like totally passed it. Yeah. A lot of so, laws. Yeah. And even all the amendments. Stuff that if you didn't study up recently, you wouldn't pass. Yeah. And then there's a whole section about technology. Oh, that's new. Things. Yeah. Like uh, using word processing and different programs and things like that like, <laughs> oh, word processing do you just do that, say that? yeah you like right. dot matrix printers and things yes. <laughs> those big oh i remember when i was in college we had to take a computer programming class everybody used remember. to have to program when we were younger. like pascal or i can't remember what language Mm-hmm. And the programming place was in the basement in this grungy building, and you had to type up cards. Did you ever take a computer programming class? I, I did, but we cards. were past cards by then. So you had the punch cards? You had cards. Yeah, you had to punch, type up these cards and then keep them in the right order. And then the cards would whip through the whatever processor, like or whatever, and as big as a house. And it would be stuff like two plus two equals four. It was like- Right, but that was like a big deal, right? Yeah, big deal, big deal. That's what, that's then what you get a big pack of paper that, um, what do you call that? Continuous paper with the holes on it. Yeah, you'd have, to, you'd have to like take off. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, those were the days, huh? Those were but the that days. That was what Bill, you know, Bill Gates did. That was his first program was on those cards, right? Because he was, they were able to, um, to to design a program that would go on one of those big computers. And that was like the first mm-hmm. sort of software. That, speaking of which, Bill's in the news today, doesn't look good. What happened? Well, you know, now that he's divorcing. He's separated, separated. divorced. He's been- Well, now, all the, now all, the, all the gossip is coming out. Okay. I feel kind of bad about it. I wish it wasn't, uh, you know, I hope it's not true, but you know, you can okay. be a super genius and also be Someone. Well, apparently I read he was kind of expecting it because he's been living in another place for the okay. past three months. So, well, it turns out that the, that the deal breaker was his, his friendship with Jeffrey Epstein. If your husband's hanging around with a guy like Jeffrey Epstein, you don't want That's to. worse than him hanging out with his ex-girlfriend. That's way worse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The ex-girlfriend, you'd be like, okay, she's part of the package. She was there before <laughs> me. She's also, you know. I mean, yeah, but the, uh, yeah, I don't even want to know that story. No. That just sounds bad. 
Yeah. Well, I hope it's not true. Maybe it's some fake news. Well, who knows? Jeffrey yeah. Epstein's dead now, but they used to right. have lunch together, even Melania. So, uh, not Melania. <laughs> Melinda. <laughs> <laughs> Such, a bad <laughs> Such a bad comparison. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Melinda. We love you. Right, right. So, um, what else am I doing? I, oh, I went to see that super cool new um, present, that room that they have a theater in Porto Vecchio, beautiful space. It's called Sala Lutazzi, Lelio Lutazzi. And he was uh, playing the piano and jazz during the allied military government. And they have a big picture of him with Louis Armstrong and he's the center of the picture. No way. Louis, Lelio Lutazzi. That's so, cool. so beautiful, a beautiful space. Oh, I so hope we can do might something get, in that space. Might be able to do something in there in the fall. That would be great. Really nice. It's in Magazzino 26 mm -hmm. on the third floor. Really nice space. Is it open to the public yet or is it? No, not yet. They've done public? some press conferences. The city's done press conferences, but it's not open yet to the public. Mm -hmm. so, okay. but very, very nice. And what else? Well, summer um, school, Francesca saying that summer school is super, is filling up yes. super fast. Or we have lots of sign-ups for the summer academy. That's great. Lots of so people. People are, yeah, I can't wait to, for us to like be with the kids again. Yes. We're all getting our vaccinations done. That's a good thing. Yes. Even Christian yes. got his appointment today. He's got an appointment to go get vaccinated. But I know some of our teachers are getting vaccinated. Oh, so good. Very good news. Good, good, good. News. good. Good. And I go tomorrow to get my. And what am I looking at? Oh, Independence Day. I'm looking ahead towards July. We went up to see the baseball field. So right. beautiful I soldier field in Opechina. We'll see if we can do something okay. up there outside for the Fourth of July. That would be fun. Well, it doesn't have to yeah, be the Fourth of the July. Pictures. I love the pictures day. that they had there, the sort of pictures of the old days when people played, you know, baseball up there. Looks super nice, by the way. Yeah. Oh, the, and the names of the teams, the Giants, <laughs> the, the Indians, the Red Sox. Mm -hmm. so. I remember when I played baseball when I was younger, I played t-ball first and then softball. And the boys teams were like the Giants, the Brewers, the, you know, the Yankees, and the girls were named after flowers. I played for the Daisies. No. And we played against the roses. I'm not kidding. We oh, no. The roses, they have thorns. Oh, no. Well, I was thinking about showing the Bad News Bears. Oh, my God. One of my favorite movies. Because they have so many young kid players under 12. And I think Bad News Bears is fun. Oh, my God. It'd be great. It's got Walter that. Matthau, the original. And oh, um, what's her name? Tatum O'Neill. No. She's the girl player. Yes. That's so cool. Yeah, we definitely have to show that. I love showing those old movies like that. That's one of my favorite things that we do sometimes, those nostalgia times. And now that we're going to be going into our 60th year, I hope we show some like old movies from 1961. Yes. We're looking into um, West Side Story. Ooh, I love Ooh. the musical. Ooh. Musical, musical. Because yeah. West Side Story is coming out again. Um, I heard. Spielberg has made another version of West Side Story that should have come out a while ago, but since the theaters are closed, it didn't come out. It'll, it'll probably be out this summer or fall. Awesome. So. Listen, okay. Denise, I gotta go. All right. Good it's to talk to you. you Why, yeah. I learn something from you every time I talk to you. Well, I'm just, you know, full of surprises, Denise. You are. You good are. you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. And...